Welcome to Boxton Health. Today we uncover the topic of chicken pox. Chicken pox is a sickness that happens when the varicella zoster virus pays a visit. It's the one that makes your skin break out in those annoying, itchy rashes with tiny blisters filled with liquid. Chicken pox has a knack for spreading easily, especially to folks who've never had it or never got the chicken pox shot. Thankfully, these days, we've got a vaccine that's like a superhero shield for kids, keeping them safe from chicken pox and all the troubles it can bring along. The chicken pox vaccine is a reliable way to dodge this illness and steer clear of the other health issues it can bring your way. When you catch the chicken pox, the telltale rash doesn't show up right away. It takes about 10 to 21 days after the virus, known as varicella zoster, pays you a visit. This rash tends to hang around for about 5 to 10 days. But before the rash makes its grand entrance, it usually sends out a few party invitations in the form of symptoms that pop up 1 to 2 days before the main show. These include things like fever, a sudden loss of appetite, headaches, feeling tired, and just a general sense of not feeling your best. Once the chicken pox rash finally shows up, it goes through three stages. First, you get these raised bumps known as papules that take a few days to arrive. Then, within about a day, small blisters filled with fluid, called vesicles, show up, break open, and leak. And finally, you get crusts and scabs that form over the broken blisters and take a few more days to heal. Sometimes, new bumps keep joining the party for several days, so you end up with bumps, blisters, and scabs all at once. Here's the tricky part. You become a potential virus spreader up to 48 hours before the rash even appears, and you remain contagious until all those broken blisters have crusted over. For the most part, chicken pox is pretty mild in healthy kids, but it can sometimes get a little wild. The rash might decide to go all out and cover your whole body. It can even invite some friends to form blisters in places like your throat and eyes. Sometimes, these unwanted guests might even show up in delicate areas like the throat, eyes, urethra, anus, and vagina. Chicken pox is caused by a tricky virus called varicella zoster. This little troublemaker can jump from person to person in a couple of ways. 1. It can sneak through direct contact with the rash itself. And 2. It can pull a fast one when someone with chicken pox coughs or sneezes, and you accidentally breathe in those pesky air droplets. Your chances of catching the virus behind chicken pox are greater if you've never had chicken pox before or never received the chicken pox vaccine. This is especially crucial for folks working with kids in places like childcare or schools to get vaccinated. Now, if you've already had chicken pox or got the vaccine, you've built a fortress of immunity against chicken pox. It means you're like a superhero with a shield. Even if, for some rare reason, you still end up with chicken pox after getting vaccinated, your symptoms tend to be less severe. You might have fewer blisters, and your fever could be mild or even non-existent. While a tiny percentage of people can catch chicken pox more than once, that's a pretty uncommon occurrence. Chicken pox might not always be a big deal, and many folks get through it just fine. However, it's essential to know that it can take a serious turn and lead to some other health troubles, such as infections in your skin, soft tissues, bones, joints, or bloodstream caused by bacteria. Dehydration, which is when your body gets too low on water and other fluids. Pneumonia, an illness that affects one or both of your lungs. Swelling of the brain, known as encephalitis. Sepsis, which is a severe response to infection in the body. Toxic shock syndrome, a dangerous complication that can arise from certain bacterial infections. Raise syndrome, a condition that causes swelling in the brain and liver. This can happen in children and teens who take aspirin during chicken pox. Although it's incredibly rare, chicken pox can even lead to death in some cases. Now, here's an interesting twist. If you've already had chicken pox, you are at risk of something called shingles. You see, the varicella zoster virus doesn't really pack its bags and leave after the chicken pox rash is gone. It hangs out in your nerve cells. Many years down the road, it might decide to stage a comeback and give you shingles, which involves painful clusters of blisters. 
This virus revival tends to happen more often in older adults and folks with weaker immune systems. The tricky part is that the pain from shingles can stick around long after those pesky blisters have left the building. This lingering discomfort is known as postherpetic neuralgia. The chickenpox vaccine, also known as the varicella vaccine, is the most effective way to shield yourself from chickenpox. Even if you happen to catch chickenpox after getting vaccinated, your symptoms are usually much milder. In the United States, there are two licensed chickenpox vaccines, Varivax, which contains only the chickenpox vaccine and is suitable for individuals aged 1 and older, and ProQuad, which combines the chickenpox vaccine with the measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine and is used for children between the ages of 1 and 12. This combined vaccine is also referred to as the MMRV vaccine. For some children aged 12 to 23 months, the MMRV combination vaccine may slightly increase the risk of fever and seizures. It's a good idea to discuss the pros and cons of using combined vaccines with your child's healthcare provider. If children between the ages of 7 and 12 haven't been vaccinated, they should receive two doses of the varicella vaccine, given at least three months apart. People aged 13 or older who haven't been vaccinated should get two catch-up doses, separated by at least four weeks. This is especially important if you are at a higher risk of being exposed to chickenpox, which includes healthcare workers, teachers, childcare employees, international travelers, military personnel, adults living with young children, and non-pregnant women of childbearing age. If you're unsure whether you've had chicken pox or the vaccine, your healthcare provider can perform a blood test to find out. It's important to note that pregnant individuals should not get the chicken pox vaccine. If you plan to get vaccinated before pregnancy, it's advisable not to try to conceive during the vaccine series or for one month after the final dose. There are also some individuals who shouldn't get the vaccine, or they should wait. These include people with weakened immune systems, such as those with HIV are taking medications that affect the immune system, as well as individuals allergic to gelatin or the antibiotic neomycin, those with certain types of cancer or undergoing cancer treatment involving radiation or medicines, and those who have recently received blood or blood products from a donor. If you're uncertain about whether you should get the vaccine, it's best to consult with your healthcare provider. If you're planning to become pregnant, make sure to ask your provider if you're up to date on your vaccines. In healthy children, chickenpox often doesn't require medical treatment. Some kids might find relief from itching by taking a type of medication known as an antihistamine, but usually, the best approach is to let the illness run its course. However, if chickenpox spreads to your mouth and tongue, it can be quite uncomfortable, though not typically serious. In such cases, your doctor may recommend one or a combination of the following treatments. A bland diet, avoiding hot beverages and spicy, salty, and acidic foods can reduce irritation and discomfort in your mouth. Local anesthetics, applying a doctor-recommended local anesthetic inside your mouth and on your tongue can help alleviate the pain caused by oral sores. Cold foods, consuming cold drinks and foods can help numb any discomfort. Staying hydrated, drinking plenty of fluids, especially water, can combat dehydration, which can worsen your symptoms. Oral hygiene, keeping your mouth and tongue clean with a mild toothpaste and regular flossing will help prevent secondary bacterial infections. Gargling with plain water can also wash away bacteria and debris. Now, for individuals at a high risk of complications from chicken pox, Healthcare providers sometimes prescribe medicines to shorten the duration of the illness and reduce the risk of complications. If you or your child falls into this high-risk category, your healthcare provider may suggest antiviral medications to combat the virus, such as acyclovir. These medicines may help lessen the symptoms of chickenpox, but they work best when taken within 24 hours of the rash's first appearance. Other antiviral drugs like velocyclovir, Valtrex, and famcyclovir might also make the illness less severe, though they may not be suitable for everyone. In certain situations, your provider might recommend getting the chickenpox vaccine after exposure to the virus.
If complications do arise, your healthcare provider will determine the appropriate treatment. For instance, antibiotics can be used to treat infected skin and pneumonia. Brain swelling, known as encephalitis, is often addressed with antiviral medicine, and hospital treatment may be necessary in some cases. Here are some practical tips to help alleviate the symptoms of mild chickenpox. Avoid scratching, refrain from scratching the skin, as it can cause scarring and slow down the healing process. Scratching also increases the risk of infecting the sores. If it's your child who can't resist scratching, consider trimming their fingernails and perhaps putting gloves on their hands, especially at night. Relieve itch and other symptoms. The chickenpox rash can be intensely itchy, and those pesky broken blisters, known as vesicles, can sometimes sting. To find relief from these and other symptoms, you can try the following. Take a cool bath. A soothing cool bath with added ingredients like baking soda, aluminum acetate, or uncooked oatmeal can provide relief. Use calamine lotion. Dab calamine lotion on the itchy spots for relief. Adjust diet. If chicken pox sores appear in the mouth, opt for a soft, bland diet. Antihistamines. In case of itching, antihistamines like diphenhydramine, Benadryl, can help. However, it's important to consult your provider to ensure it's safe for your child to take antihistamines. Manage fever. For mild fever, consider using acetaminophen, Tylenol. Contact your provider. Reach out to your healthcare provider if a fever persists for more than 4 days and rises above 102 degrees Fahrenheit, 38.9 degrees Celsius. Do not administer aspirin to children and teenagers with chicken pox, as it can lead to a serious condition known as Ray's syndrome. Consult your provider for NSAIDs. Prior to giving any non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, NSAID, such as ibuprofen, Advil, Motrin Ib, others, to someone with chicken pox, discuss it with your healthcare provider. Some studies suggest that this type of medication may increase the risk of skin infections or tissue damage. If you enjoyed today's video do like share and subscribe for more informative content. Thanks for watching.